it was fall of 2014. It was probably mid-October, and I was 10 years old at the time. It was a Friday in mid-autumn, which could only by being symbolized by the sky to also dictate my mood and the moons and the actions and the words of the people around me. The first half of the day it was sunny. It was not a whole lot of clouds in the sky. It was cold though. I was excited. I was enthusiastic. I was ready to go. I was energized. I was in a good mood. I was looking forward to field trip that I would take with my fifth grade class to the Annette Nature Center for the second episode of the Annette Nature Center. There would be three episodes. The first one, the one before, uh, we did a variety of summer activities uh, because it was in September where we um, we took canoes, we um, caught, you know, pond creatures, and also walked on a non-ecological trail with, like, plastic plates and, you know, cups in it that weren't, you know, from the biosphere. I can remember that that day I was so looking forward to go up to a tower that was like right along the river um, that I saw as I was canoeing that morning, you know, to see what was going on from a new vantage point. To my disappointment, as I was walking up in the hot some with sun, dehydrated, physically exhausted, needing water. I remember hearing the voices of my classmates saying that there are wasp nests up here in the tower. At that point in time, I did not want to risk going up there at all. Uh, it was very really disappointing, but I would not, you know, simply disregard what they were saying because, again, I did not want to throw myself into climbing up all of those steps and then hear the buzzing and see the, you know, the sight of the wasps and then get stung. Um, but my, um, my friend Thane was with me at the time and he is born in the month of August. Um, you know, if you're born, you know, middle to late summer, he was born on the 29th of August. If you were born during that time of heal, then you are a whisk taker. And those little uncomforts of being hot, itchy, all those things when it comes to bugs, you just have an ability to let them roll right off of you. Wash all over you. But I just, I'm still to this day afraid of those creatures. You know, he did encourage me to 
walk up those steps, get up there, um, and he said, come on, I'll protect you, but nope, no, I'll let them sting me so that they won't sting you, I admire the maturity, I admire the leadership quality, but I can't do it. You, you cannot force me to do that. It would have to be like, I don't know, a thousand dollar prize where I could go buy a mansion and then, um, you know, do something beyond my wildest dreams for you to get me to go up there and do that. I remember um, my associate that day, Mrs. Wilson, saying that um, my fifth grade teacher, who was named after an Italian ham, which if I had a wand, I would snap her into that for how she treated me and how I felt like I was walking on eggshells almost all the time that we were together. She said, she's down there in the canoe. She'll, she can heal you. She can heal what you're saying and how you're acting. A big theme for that day was bugs, um, with like, you know, caterpillars on your skin kind of climbing up you. I know that there was, you know, several kids who had, you know, you know, adopted those creatures and I got to feel um, one of those caterpillars actually on my finger for maybe the first time since I can remember. We went back to the little shelter that we were at, and I drank sink water. When I didn't know that there was actually a water fountain up, you know, up at the, um, you, you know, up at this big building, the Annette Nature Center, you know, headquarters, I want to call it, building, and that was just too... And that was just that direction. That was just to the west. We got on the bus. Um, I started out the bus trip. It actually started pretty good. And this was going back to the school, back to Wilder. And I started sitting with a girl in my class. And I wanted to sit with my friend. And when all of a sudden I saw him saying, come here, sit with me. I just, just, oh my goodness, it was like all of a sudden something went off on me and he was a magnet drawing me in. Exactly. Just like the siren song. Drawing me in and I automatically just went over there. I really, really liked him. He was somebody that I um, felt like I wanted to be with. However, I would sort of regret that. Because he did have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I don't mean to get into the details of that. But, you know, I felt like I was kind of walking on eggs. And I felt like, you, you know, I just did not feel content. And I felt like I couldn't just relax and take a breath. Because I didn't know when or what he was going to throw 
help me. Say, do move around. Try to bother me and, you know, irritate me with. And try to, you know, make me mad. And of course it doesn't mean it, but that's what I'm talking about. That impulsive ADHD behavior. And so it progressed, and as it progressed, uh, I got, you know, more and more irritated, and I could have, you know, said something and got mad, but, you know, knowing my fifth grade teacher, um, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to, you know, really raise my voice, but I was trying to, you know, be assertive and take care of it. Um, you know, just try to stand up for myself and, you know, just try to get through the ride as best as I could. And this would crop up again and again and again with the, you know, with the more, you know, trips and, and field trips that we would go on. You know, throughout the fall of 2014 and then also getting into the winter and the spring of 2015. I remember staring. I remember looking right across from um, you know the girl that I you know started sitting with, and I don't remember what she said exactly, but she said something like. I think that sitting next to me would have been the better idea. And at that moment, I agreed, and I wish I could go back over there. But you have to understand, I was, um, just I couldn't do it because I did not want to get caught doing it because the bus was moving. And I wouldn't want to change seats, and I wouldn't know how I would sneak my way to do that. So I sat there, and I suffered. We got back. I was hot. I was tired. My teacher did not, you know, address the whole class and go off on a rage and a rampage, getting really mad. But she did invite a couple people over to her desks, uh, over to her, you know, where she was sitting, she did have a word with them, I have a chat with them, and I think that, you know, Zane was one of them, and I think that the trip went well, and we would go back to, you know, you know, to the Net Nature Center later on that fall. And we did just that. It was Friday morning. Um, I remember waking up that morning, feeling, you know, ready to start the day in a good mood, in a good mindset, feeling emotionally and mentally well. I got up, I sat down, I watched a couple of Shall Tell You episodes, um, you know, on my, you know, on my mom's computer, you know, old clips from old episodes, and if you don't know what Shall Tell You is, it's a, um, uh, it's an Italian cooking show, uh, with Marion Esposito. I remember doing that. I got dressed, I had breakfast, I brushed my teeth, um, my mom was in the kitchen preparing my lunch, which consisted of, um, like a, um, Lunchable, it was like, you know, with pizza, and had like a flat bread pizza with cheese and pepperoni, and I can still taste it thinking about it with, the, with a juice box. Um, some fresh raspberries as well, uh, and maybe another dessert or applesauce to go in there. We 
you know, got into the car, I put my lunch and backpack into the back seat, and then I got into the car, we rode up the hill to Wildowitz in that direction, and she dropped me off at the, you know, the park, the, um, the little, um, place where, you know, you drop your kids off right next to the door, and little did I know that later on, I would be missing her quite a bit, and I would be feeling very disappointed in how it would go. You know, she said, have a nice day, and, you know, I, I, I hope, you know, have fun, I can't wait for you to tell me all about it. Um, well, at the end of the day, I certainly couldn't wait to get it off my chest. And what I would get off my chest was not anything positive by much at all. I went into school that morning, walked down the hall. Um, the classroom was in the red hallway near the second grade classrooms I went in. I had my own locker. I put my, you know, my bag, um, and my lunchbox into the locker, and then I shut it, sat down in my seat, and maybe we did a little bit of school work that morning. I, you know, I don't remember. Then... Um, after that, we got ready to go. She probably, you know, my teacher probably addressed the class. Um, talking through the expectations and everything and, um, and, um, you know, what we were going to do, things like that. I don't remember. Uh, we went on the bus, which we would take to the Annette Nature Center. So we rode and we got near high V and you turn right to like a gra uh, gravel road and then go down there and then you turn, you know, you know, go that direction. So you go west and then you go, um, no, you go south, excuse me, then you go west. Whenever I was on the bus, going on any trip or, you know, excursion, um, I always just felt this really just uncomfortable, really tense feeling. I didn't know if anyone would act up. Um, I... It made me feel, you know, feel really insecure and just very uncomfortable um, sitting next to someone that I didn't know very well or that I just didn't trust. Um, so anyway, it was kind of a neutral, you know, what you'd expect from fifth grade, it was bus drive, we got there, we got out, we went to the shelter, and I remember, um, then, um, you know, Mrs. Jacobson, Miss Jacobson, I can't remember if it was Mrs. or Miss, you know, unmarried, widowed, Mrs. J, Miss J, kind of went through what the day would look like, how we should act, what are the rules and expectations, and she, you know, she said, I don't want anyone complaining. I don't want any one of you complaining, saying, I'm cold, I'm cold. Well, it's your responsibility to bring a sweater or a jacket with you. You know, that was a little, um, 
mockery she made of like a you know like a you know a student who was you know then she did the same with you know saying you know you know and if, and I I also don't want to hear when is lunch when is lunch well it'll be when it'll be she you know said something along those lines which I kind of related to a little bit because you know I got hungry you know standing up and in the cold and and it would be you know long morning and then you know just waiting you know for that moment when I would open my lunch needed that morning we went into that big building that I talked about um, up on the hill that was like the you know the central building for the headquarters in you know for the natural center we went in there and there was a woman there that was going to be showing us and talking through to us how we would make dream catchers. So the whole thing that we were looking at was Native American survival and life lifestyle, the things that they did to survive, the things that they did kind of on the side as, you know, entertainment. So one of the things that they did was make dream catchers and that I did. And I wasn't, you know, really good at making a dream capsule. I just, just didn't, you know, it just didn't, you know, I just, I had trouble trying to create it. Um, and I had someone to do it with me. Then after that, then after that took a while, we then went outside and Mrs. Jacobson um, had us do something that involved wood and leaves. And I don't remember what we were doing, but I knew that it had to do with both of those two things. things. Uh, I was partnered up with a group. I remember, you know, walking into the field and touching a leaf, um, like touching a, you, you know, just like a sappy white poisonous, it, was, it wasn't poisonous, but it was just like sticky and it got on my fingers. And it wasn't that bad and I didn't, you know, really complain, but just that's kind of one of my pet peeves is, you know, my fingers or my skin or my, you know, legs getting sticky, because I hate stickiness. I had lunch. I had the Lunchable and then the raspberries, and there was like a father of one of the students in my class who was though that, you know, maybe made a comment about raspberries and how maybe he didn't like raspberries, I don't remember. <laughs> you know, everybody has their preferences, but so, after lunch was when things started to shift. It was leading into when things would get bad. After we ate lunch, we then went into a field with this woman who ran the Annette Nature Center. Well, she didn't run it, but she was just part of it and she worked there. We would build a teepee. It would be a team and a group um, effort with students collectively. And she talked maybe about, you know, the history and, you know, the culture of teepees and when and how they were used. And then, um, you know, she said something about um, it falling down, which was a big thing, which I will get into here. But, um, um, but this might fall down, so feel warning or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly something like that. Maybe it was something else, but it did have to do with the TV falling. So we all pitched in. I, you know, 
probably pissed in to create the, you know, the, you know, create the thing and, you know, build it up. And at that time, the sky was, the sky was getting cloudy. It was starting to, um, you know, be, it was becoming cloudy. The sun was going away. The gray clouds were coming in. And then that set the scene. You know, there's a saying, as above, so below, exactly how it went. It, you know, it was coincidence, really, but still, it, it, it does make sense, so I'll get into that. So, then, I remember just, just, just what I was feeling was just really, really unsure of, you know, myself. And then, then, and I was scared, and I was worried, and I was nervous that at any moment it could come falling down. And I knew that they, you know, that she knew what she was doing. Um, but I just did not want to be in a situation with, you know, the students that I was with, and then the thing just come crashing down. And it was really, really tall, and, you know, she, like she shouldn't have said anything because. Then, you know, she, she got me all kind of worked up inside. And so, I remember going up to her, and I remember asking, um, is this going to fall down? Um, is this going to stay up? Um, you know, and you know, I don't know if I asked, you know, what you're doing or not. You, you know, I don't know. Uh, I probably didn't. But, um... You know, she said, no, it's not going to fall down. Don't worry, it's not going to fall down. And I wasn't, I wasn't asking her with any intentions of being mean, of being negative, pestering, bothering her by any means. There was not a bone of that in my body. Not a single bone of that in my 